uh, before we talk about some more about your books, um, would it be possible just to dip into a story which comes <coughs> towards the, the end of Bedsit Disco Queen, which is um, Glastonbury 1995 and the, and the Jeff Buckley encounter? Mm. Yes, Jeff Buckley. Well, Jeff Buckley, we bumped into... Um, well, Ben bumped into him, didn't mm. you? Um, having his hair cut. Uh, ben went to have his hair cut in we New were, York. We were in... Yeah, we, we, we moved to New York thinking we were going to make a record out there. <coughs> and we were, but we only ended up there for about three or four months or something. Mm. But in the middle of that, uh, we had a mutual friend who cut hair on, in the East Village. And um, she invited me over to have my hair cut when she said, uh, oh, it's all right, there'll, there'll only be one other mm. person here. And that one other person was Jeff Buckley. Um, and he was cu having his hair cut as well. So there's the two of us having our hair cut, <laughs> talking in the, in the mirror to each other. And we just said, uh, what are you doing you know, later this year? I think I said, oh, we're playing Glastonbury. He says, oh, I'm playing Glastonbury. Uh, and then, like you do, oh, we should do something together. But these things, they never often happen. Um, but then as... Tracy talks about in her book, we were literally 20 minutes before we were due to go on stage at Glastonbury and we were in our porter cabin and there was a knock on the door and it was Jeff and he just bounded in like Tigger, didn't he? Yeah, he, he just was said, very Tigger. <coughs> yeah. Um, he said, so what, we, what song are we going to do? What are we doing then? <laughs> but we haven't <laughs> practised anything. <laughs> Um, and you ended up doing... We settled on I Know It's Over. Yeah. Um, By the Smiths. Which yeah. we both knew. And I, I've no idea, I don't think it was recorded, so I've never heard it again since that day. But I just remember us, you know, we hadn't had any time to really clarify who was going to sing which line. <laughs> so as, as, it, as each yeah. line began, I think both of us just kind of looked at each other and sort of went for it, going, I'll do this one. <laughs> oh, no, 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 yours, yours, a bit like a doubles. But there is footage of you playing Kick Out the Jams. Yeah, well, his set, I think, was covered by Channel 4. Oh, right. And that was a very spinal tap moment i was at the side of the stage watching jeff buckley set and he puts his guitar down at the end of one song sees me at the side of the stage and beckons me on and i'm like nigel tufnell going <laughs> me and he goes yeah you like that so i walk on and he says he just points to a guitar and he says put it on so i put the guitar on and i said what are we playing and he says mc5's kick out the jams now I probably must be the only person in rock and roll who didn't know MC Fry's Kick Out The Jams. I mean, I, can, I know Charlie Mingus and Duke Ellington and John Martin and Robert Wyatt, but MC... So I just thought, well, whatever. I'm on stage with Jeff Buckley. How hard can it How be? How hard can it be? <laughs> and luckily, it was only two chords. So I'm there, rather like Woody Allen in Zelig, mm. standing at the back of the stage. If you look carefully, if you ever find that footage, I'm playing guitar with Jeff Buckley.
Uh, thanks, Ben.